Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I am happy to bring you a watercolor tutorial of an adorable little fluffy cute rabbit. It was last year around this time that I actually did some watercolor paintings of some sweet little rabbits and I never uploaded any of the footage so I thought this time of the year is a perfect time to share these tutorials. The theme this month in Monet Cafe is new life. The beautiful time of year in spring where flowers are blooming and life is flourishing. I hope you'll take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button to be notified of future videos. And if you would consider becoming a patron of mine on my Patreon page, it helps to keep this free content coming. Plus, you get extra goodies and extra content and it's only $5 a month. All right, here we go with the supplies. Of course, I need some water. This is watercolor paper. And for this bunny painting, I'm using my little travel watercolor palette. It actually has a little spot where you can put your thumb in and hold it just like a palette, like a paint palette. And I have various tube paints that I've put into my travel palette. These are some of the colors. If you're a patron of mine, I will send you a photo of my palette layout. I'll talk about my brushes as I work, but I believe I only use three of these brushes. The reference image is from pixabay.com and I will provide a clickable link to the reference image in the description of this video. Now the surface I'm working on, I'll talk a little bit while I sketch, is an arches watercolor block. I've taped it off because I wanted to do a few of these bunny paintings and I believe I've taped it off with masking tape to result in four paintings that would be approximately five inches by four inches. Now, if you're curious about this watercolor block made by Arches, it is 100% cotton paper. I do have an Amazon product review video I did on this particular product, sharing why I love it. I love how it's, act it's called a block because it's glued around the perimeter. It helps to keep your watercolor paper very flat. Now, it is quite expensive. So if you're not really doing a lot of watercolor and you're just trying to get started Started. There are other watercolor papers that I recommend. Arches does sell another watercolor paper pad that is a lot less expensive than this block. But if you're interested in the block, I will also provide the link to that product review video in this description. Now for me, with something as delicate and gentle as these cute little bunnies and this one in particular, he was so darn cute, you want to make sure you keep this very loose and not too rigid. He's very gentle and I wanted to get his gesture correct. His little foot was just kind of tucked in so cute and he just had the neatest little pose and position. So I was taking my time a little bit to make sure I got this right and also an accurate sketch, especially when doing things like animals or people, is really going to help to enhance your painting looking professional. And now I'm gonna speed the sketching portion up a little bit, but I just wanted to note, take time with your sketch. It is worth getting it right. And I prefer freehand sketching, but if you need to use a grid method or some other method, again, just be sure you get the, the little gesture and the anatomy of this bunny correct. Now that's a micron marker. I like these markers for watercolor. They don't bleed when you add water. You can get them with very fine points. And I wanted to stress uh, very delicately with a very fine tip, just where that little baby nose was and the mouth on bunnies, that little curve part like is on uh, cats and on bunnies is very delicate, it's very little. Um, so make sure you don't overwork that. It's just very, it's barely there. And now I'm just kind of getting in where the eye is going to be. The eye for me with animals and people, eyes are very important. You wanna make sure you get them accurately positioned. And also uh, they are the window to the soul. So you kinda wanna get those right. And you can see from the reference image that the other eye isn't showing, but there is kind of a little indention between the head and where his um, cheeks kind of fluff out, where you get the idea of where the eye would be. And I'm getting just a few little lines in to give myself kind of just some idea of where things are. And then I'm actually going to erase a bit of the pencil lines. I don't want it to be so hard. Again, this is going to be delicate. And here you'll see me using a kneaded eraser to do just that. I'm just knocking off some of the pencil. And now it's time to paint. 
I will be using my Princeton size 12 brush you see there, but I decided for the background to use this large Chinese watercolor brush. That is Prussian blue that I'm mixing up. I may have added in a little Payne's gray to that as well, but I wanted the background to have that dry brush feel, at least to begin with. So I made sure I added enough water um, for it to flow, but also to leave a few of those little white spaces. You see how artistic and sketchy that looks. I really like that, especially to begin with. I don't like to get too tight. And so I'm just kind of giving a nice little background around this little bunny. And I notice how I'm holding my brush too. When you hold your brush um, with your hand position like this, rather than cinching up on it like painting with a pencil, it's going to result in a more painterly outcome and a loose style. And so you see, I'm just really keeping this very loose. Also too, I recommend using the largest brush you can, especially for beginning stages. And keep that hand flowing. It does take practice at first. Now, I know if you see in the reference image, where is the shadow? You can see it's on the left side. So the light is coming from the uh, almost the upper right, but a little bit in front of the bunny too. But we're getting a decent shadow on his left side, and you can easily see where that is. So I'm using this same color of the Prussian blue to create somewhat of a monochromatic beginning. And I do this a lot with watercolor painting. I think it helps me to have my values correct, which I talk a lot in my pastel painting tutorials. If you have not been on this channel very much, um, I have a lot of pastel painting tutorials, but I happen to love watercolor as well. And I've had some of my subscribers saying, more watercolor, please. So that's why I thought I'd pop in this little demonstration or uh, painting tutorial um, that I did of this bunny. Uh, so I love watercolor, but I like to approach it with a painterly style. When I first started painting with watercolor, I had no idea what I was doing. And I... I painted almost like a paint by number. I would draw something, then I would fill everything in. And notice too, sometimes I am using kind of the point of the brush. I'm still using this large Chinese watercolor brush. Um, so sometimes I'm using the point, but often I will lay the brush on its side to get large swatches of uh, paint. And it does help to keep that loose style. That's what I love. And watercolor has this beautiful ability, kind of like it just did right there, to have creative accidents, happy accidents. And by having enough water to paint ratio, you allow it to do what it does so beautifully. And it did take me quite some time to kind of get the, the knack, to get in my groove with watercolor. So that's why I recommend a lot of little practice pieces and just having some fun. I do have a uh, beginner watercolor tutorial on this channel. Maybe I'll put a link to that in here. Actually just playing with color, creating something called color cal caterpillars where you're practicing on mixing color, and again, working on your water to paint ratio. Now you can see I'm gradually adding more darks, and that is something I like to focus too in my watercolor tutorials, is don't get too dark too soon, because you can't get that light back. There are some little tricks to do it, but it's never quite the same as preserving the light that's inherent from the white of the paper. Um, so that's why I take my time and I build up my darks, often adding other colors for color interest. And I am really just looking at shapes, shapes and values. Now I do know that his eye, you can see that is totally the darkest thing. Um, his eye, inside of his ear, and a little teeny weeny spot where his little mouth is. But again, I wanna keep that so delicate because he's gonna look too, um, harsh if I don't keep the, some of those marks just very, very gentle. Now, I'm just putting in a little warmth now. I'm adding, it's more of a little bit of a magenta, kind of like a, but, but it's toned down. It's kind of neutral. There's some warmth hitting him from the light source. And I also wanted to point out that of the three bunny watercolor paintings that I did, you saw the other two at the intro to this video, this one is of a style that is more of my favorite way to paint. Um, I had a recent watercolor tutorial in the last few months that is called Intuitive Watercolor. And it's a more painterly style. 
it has a little more freedom. Um, the other two bunnies that I did were a little bit more, a uh, little tighter and perhaps a little more um, realistic, I could say, but I really like this kind of loose painting. And I thought this particular bunny really lent itself towards some uh, creative energy. Now you can see the, the blue of the background has definitely dried and I'm adding a little bit more of a magenta. It has a little more warmth, a little more purple to it. This is what I was talking about with layering my darks and you can create some interesting colors. Uh, you want to be careful with it to a degree because you don't want to muddy your colors you can glaze or layer like this um, but you know just just kind of don't overdo it and this helps me when I paint in this way of not getting too dark too soon to get my values correct because if I went in and just made the background black like is in the reference image uh, first of all black would have looked very flat and I also wasn't sure if I wanted it to be that dark. So you give yourself a little room artistically to explore when you go, don't go too dark too soon. And here's where obviously I am deciding to add a little bit more dark with another interesting blue. And I'm doing a little negative painting. You see how I'm using my brush? Now this is the Princeton size 12 brush I'm using here. I have switched brushes, but I did the negative painting to create a little bit of those, um, the whisker shapes that are on the side of his face there. Uh, still keeping my strokes very painterly and loose and having what's called loose painterly edges. They're also called lost edges, where the edge is not a hard line. It's kind of just a division between values and a very subtle division. So I really like those painterly edges like that. And I've only sped this video up slightly. You should still be able to see exactly what I'm doing. And I am going to be adding some music to this and you guys just watching me paint. I have a lot more to do for this month. Um, I'm having so much fun with my patrons with many things that we've got going on on the Patreon page. And also too, I have another big... Um, project coming up that I'll be announcing soon. So, but I wanted to make sure I got this little rabbit video to you because I thought, you know what, this might be the perfect time of year to share this tutorial. And I also like to point out that I am never shy about sharing my faith and my faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And even though we get a lot of bunnies and a lot of eggs this time of year, that's not what it's about. It's about the new life that we can have through Christ. Sometimes I get a little commentary on my comments on these channels when I share those things, but I look at my channel as a chance to celebrate the Lord, celebrate creation and being able to create. We are made in his image and also just celebrating the joy of sharing that with others and the hope that we can have that is so needed in this very lost world. So I hope you can keep in mind what, um, the holiday that's called Easter is about, it's not about bunnies. <laughs> it's not about eggs, but they are cute, right? <laughs> so enjoy this tutorial to music. I will be back at the end. And if I have time this month, I'll try to upload at least one of the other bunny tutorials in watercolor. Now I do have some flower watercolor coming. I have like four more of those to upload this month. Oh my goodness. I always have more videos to edit than I have month to create them. All right, guys, I will be back at the end. Enjoy the music.
I hope you enjoyed this watercolor tutorial of this adorable bunny. And if you try it, of course, if you're a patron of mine, you can share it in our homework album. I love to see the work from my patrons. And if you're not a patron of mine, you can share it on my Instagram page. Just tag me. I'm at Susan Jenkins Artist, and I love to see what you do. All right, guys, be blessed. Happy Resurrection Day and happy painting. <laughs>